We're also following new developments on three scandals within the Obama administration. This morning, the acting commissioner of the IRS is out, and there are calls for more heads to roll. NBC's White House correspondent Peter Alexander has more on that story. Peter, good morning. Matt, good morning to you. This White House has been facing days of intense scrutiny, and this morning they're really hoping that they may have stopped the bleeding. The president has been accused by his critics of being too, too slow, too passive, even too disengaged in terms of his response to these swirling storms. And now they've launched what you might describe as a three-front war, hoping to try to halt the political damage. The White House trying to neutralize three spreading controversies at once. Late Wednesday, President Obama himself announcing the resignation of IRS's Senator acting Everybody. commissioner, Stephen Miller, his departure early next month. Americans are right to be angry about it, and I am angry about it. Miller acknowledged in an email there's a strong and immediate need to restore public trust in the nation's tax agency. But the president's critics aren't satisfied. One top House Republican insisting there are still far too many unanswered questions. Questions surrounding the deadly attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi last September as well. The White House releasing 100 pages of previously classified emails and notes outlining the intense back and forth between diplomatic and intelligence officials over the government's talking points used by U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice that ultimately removed any reference to al-Qaeda or previous CIA warnings in the region. A senior intelligence official telling NBC News Deputy CIA Director Mike Morrell crossed out those references on this early draft. But Morrell's boss, then CIA Director David Petraeus, seemed to disagree with a final watered-down version that excluded any mention of security warnings, writing, frankly, i just as soon not use this then. Republicans accused the White House of playing politics right before the election. You don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure this out. The story of Benghazi, if accurately reported, would undercut yep. the narrative. Bin Laden's dead, al-Qaeda's on the run, and they manipulated the evidence to help their political mm -hmm. re-election. The White House says no political advisors were involved in the process. And following the Justice Department's widely criticized seizure of journalists' phone records, the White House Wednesday pressed Congress to revive a law that would protect reporters from having to reveal information in the future. And the White House is also going to face head on another significant issue that this administration wants to address. That today, this morning, a senior administration official tells me that the president will meet with his joint chiefs and the defense secretary, Matt, to focus on the issue of sexual assault within the military. Mr. Obama will also face, will face more tough questions today, hosting a press conference alongside the Turkish prime minister. All right, Peter Alexander at the White House. Thank you. We want to bring in Chuck Todd, NBC's chief White House correspondent, political director. Chuck, good morning. Good morning. Wonder what the thinking is inside the White House. You and I both know yeah. that often they look at things like this and they say, oh, this is a faux Washington mm -hmm. scandal. It will blow over. It seems to be different this time. They seem to be genuinely concerned. Well, it was typical Obama White House reaction, right, which is they underreact, 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 and then they overdo it all in one day and try to get this behind right, them. Everybody. The story they're the most Just concerned about is the IRS. The they don't think any other story will penetrate with the public. The IRS gets a credibility of the government. This is a government that's trying to implement health care, trying to reform the immigration system. If the IRS is not trusted, it actually could undermine all of his plans. And it's easy to understand. You can explain what right. happened here in one sentence, which is powerful ammunition for the administration's critics, do you think the steps that were taken yesterday are sufficient to stem the fear? Not with Congress. And I think that that is, you know, the president showed more anger yesterday than he did in either of the early days. I think that was as much about politics as anything else with the public. But Congress isn't satisfied. And they shouldn't be. There are a lot of that IG report didn't answer certain questions like, why did these rogue individuals in the Cincinnati office do what they did? Meantime, the administration at long last releases a series of emails covering the debate that went on within the agencies of the administration right. over what to say about the September 11th attacks on the consulate in Benghazi. Do those emails reveal anything about whether or not this is a sideshow, as the president has yeah. called it, or something more substantive? Well, I think we know campaign politics wasn't involved, but agency politics was. I think that this raises more questions questions about what was the argument going on between the State Department and the CIA. One of the most intriguing emails is at the end from David Petraeus, then CIA director. He goes, why are we even bothering with these talking points? It had become so watered down. But it had to do with what state wanted to happen.
have done. And very quickly, I read a headline yesterday that said Republicans see blood in the water, that they see a president <laughs> yeah. who's very vulnerable politically. Is there a danger that they will overreach? There is. I mean, that's what happened to, to Republicans in 1998 with Bill Clinton. And if all of Congress is focusing on hearings to do scandals, the voters will punish them. They've done it in the past. All right, Chuck Todd, more to come on this. Thank you very much.